1901, Australia came together as a federation for the first time to become the Commonwealth of Australia. Now before that, a group of six English colonies had operated independently and were answerable only to the British Parliament. It wasn't until 1901 that Australia became this unified country. You know, they say history is a great teacher, or at least it should be. But during the pandemic, Australia seems to have failed history as a subject. Quite incredible. When you think about it, I'm talking about our collective media. Australia as a federation united us as a nation. Think about that. It also helped to remove the shackles of individualisation that had stifled progress and evolution and had tied these colonies to Britain for their existence. Think of it, six colonies, like six different countries with their own government and laws, their own defence force, the railway system, tariffs, their own postage stamps, and they even collected taxes on all the goods that crossed the borders of the various states. But by the late 19th century, people had begun to see just how inefficient things were. This system just wasn't working and it had other attendant problems. By then also, sentiments of unity and nationalisation had begun to spread right across the states of Australia. Colonists had begun to see the benefits of uniting this young nation, coming under one system of government that would deal with trade and defence and would also instill a sense of national pride. Now, although it may seem like I'm giving you a bit of a history lesson, I'm trying not to. I'm just trying to illustrate a point. It's more about just how little our modern media understands about how Federation works and the purpose behind it and why at the turn of the 20th century, Australia actually chose to become a Commonwealth country. For all the devastation the pandemic has caused, for all the destruction it has unleashed on our lives, all the disruption, all the misery and the death, and the way it's had this uh, manic way of stalling our global economies, it has also done something else. It's exposed just how little understanding we have about why we are no longer a group of colonies, but massed together on an island and we're called Australia. It seems to me that many in the media have been walking through a bit of a fog bathed in their naivety. You know, every day of the pandemic has illustrated just how little we understand about what the Federation is and how it really operates. It's also shown up just how difficult it is these days to tell a national story in each state. The major criticism of the media coverage throughout this pandemic has been all about what it's left out and how it's left far too many people confused about what they could or couldn't do. No one actually had the time to stand aside and say, hang on, the stories will be different. Each jurisdiction has a different set of laws. Reporting on the COVID-19 pandemic should be different both in approach and strategy in each state of Australia, because each government has a responsibility for its own citizens, the ones that fit within the border. Yet, what did we see each night? State news bulletins kept reporting about what Australia was doing, as if it was a, a different place with different laws, while all the while the story in each state should have differed because of the level of contagion in each area of the country. Each jurisdiction had been affected differently. So the commentary should have also been different. The national picture should have been treated very differently. Yet the confusion continued, bulletin after bulletin, with every update, as we spoke about the toll and the imposition of restrictions, we kept telling the same story. And all we did was add to the confusion. Now, the simple truth is that the COVID-19 story has really been too big and too important. And everyone wanted it in their bulletins. And more and more, the story or the narrative around the crisis has been made to fit a national picture, when in fact, that should never have been the case. 
Each state government and its premier was also afforded a national profile like never before. Now that wasn't a position they deserved on the nightly news, on a national platform, but everyone wanted to be in on the story. And naively, the media thought, hey, we should keep it up. And they continued to run national and state stories together, featuring other states or territories. Single-handedly through a combination of excitement, ignorance, and as I said earlier, naivety, the collective media, starved of any other stories, created more confusion amongst more Australians. They confused us about what laws applied to them or how our respective state governments were dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there any wonder then why so many Australians fail to truly appreciate how the lockdown laws were being applied and what strategies were being undertaken in their respective state? Victoria is not New South Wales. New South Wales is not Tasmania, nor Queensland, nor South Australia, nor WA. So what on earth were news editors thinking when they were running stories that had no relevance to each jurisdiction? Well, the truth is, there was so much blood in the water that they got excited about the biggest story of their lives and they simply didn't want to miss out.